Okay. Hey, YouTube. Mark Bellinger back here again from Advanced Electronic. Um, what I did was I added a light bulb to the circuit. Um, the other light bulbs are a little bit much, but I added an LED bulb. Um, I don't know, it's probably a 3 or 4 watt bulb. But uh, if we watch the meter, the voltage is growing. Now this circuit, the oscillating relay, like I said, is fired up by the battery. Okay, it's uh, run in series through the coil, through the normally closed switch, and then into one end of the primary of the transformer. The other end completes the circuit that goes to the other end of the, uh, the oscillation circuit. And the secondary side, the high voltage side, is feeding the rectifier. It's coming out of the rectifier and feeding the battery. Um, in parallel with that line, coming from the rectifier, it goes down and around just a piece of speaker wire and it's connected to the bulb as well as the leads that go to the battery. So the LED light is still on, the voltage is still climbing, it's 11.58 now on one meter, it's a fluke meter. Um, this one over here is 11.56, the dot died, but um, that's an ideal Sperry meter and um, that's climbing as well. It's a, a bit of excitement for me here because um, what I did was I was just playing around with this and when I wound the transformer I said well let's see what happens when I connect to the battery and the tone of the relay went from down low lower frequency up to the high frequency that you hear and um, the battery started to charge now this battery just a couple minutes ago was drawn down to 9 volts with that light bulb right there that's a 11 or 2157 tail light bulb or something like that and um, I put two of them in, in parallel and put it on the battery to drive it down this light bulb is I mean, it's glowing pretty bright it's still it's still on there in the circuit there's nothing else running there's no tricks no gimmicks here this little box is this potentiometer is not connected here this little box is actually a uh, box for some of my tools and we'll open the box there's dies and taps inside of there and no wires I don't know if you can see, it's kind of dark in there, but there's no batteries anywhere other than this battery. Um, people say, well, geez, how do you get free energy out of it because it's got a battery? Well, the battery was lower than what it is now, and it's charging. It's going higher and higher. So we're getting energy from somewhere. I mean, yes, you need energy. To, it's not creating energy. It's, not, it's building it, but it's drawing it from somewhere else. What's happening is... This relay has a coil in there, and the coil is energized, creates a magnetic field. When the mag magnetic field is shut down, it collapses and creates a reverse high voltage spike, which is coming out, it's driven into the primary side of the, the transformer with any type of electrical pulse that transfers magnetically through the core to the secondary side. The secondary side has actually got 120 volts to it, I'm sorry, uh, probably somewhere around 90 volts, and then when it's rectified, it becomes 120 volts DC. So the DC voltage is connected to the battery. I haven't had any problems with it. Um, at the battery, you're only measuring. Now it's up to 11.58 on this meter and 11.61 on this meter. So it's not enough to overcharge the battery because the power is very little. The voltage is high, but the amperage is very small. So when you connect it to the load, which is the battery at this point, and the light bulb, it, um, it drops that voltage down to the 12-volt range where you want to be. Um, it's probably going to max out, which I've seen this circuit so far, maxes the battery out at 14 volts after a long time. But this has been going right now for quite some time, maybe half hour, uh, 20 minutes before the light bulb was connected. Um, I drove it down while it was in oscillation with those bulbs and it ran for 45 minutes to an hour and then I shut it off, I connected this bulb uh, actually I'm sorry, I, I connected it without the bulb, brought it back up to about 9.8 volts, 9.5 in the last video and then I connected this LED bulb and now the voltage is still growing. Now we'll keep, the, keep this on the meter to show. And if anybody has any questions, uh, oh, why don't you show this, why don't you show that, I will, I'll, I'll show you anything you want but I, all I have at this point is a clamp-on ammeter 
and voltmeters because all my little voltmeters and emitters that I bought from China, the little portable ones, all burnt out from a, uh, a spike from the back EMF. Now that shows you how powerful the, the, uh, the spikes really are. So anyhow, like I said again, get charge. It's going uphill. It's oscillating from 5.9 to 60. This is all the way up to 11.62. And with a load on it, it is grown. So you can be as skeptical as you will. I'm not trying to sell this to anybody. I showed the entire circuit of how, how it's built. So anybody could build this. But we could basically take this and build it on a much larger scale and create power with it. It's very simple to do. And um, for the lack of... Uh, of understanding I will actually tell you the windings on there if I can remember the wire size I believe that that's a 22 gauge and the right hand side is a 30 gauge wire the 22 gauge is I believe 250 wraps and I think the secondary side if I remember correctly is 700 windings so I'll give you a, an, a, an idea of, of what it is the reason why I went with 250 windings on here is because I've been having a problem um, when I do wind these coils and connect them to the oscillation circuit, it shorts it out. Um, there's just too much. I mean, you have a coil, a small coil, oscillating into a larger coil. So you have to have a, a very high impedance, and um, this, this is just so, so it doesn't short it out. But it is in series with that coil, so if it were in parallel, this would not work. This would, should be shorted out. That wouldn't be oscillating. And... Um, it just wouldn't wouldn't happen. So, again, three or three or four watt LED, twelve volt. And that's one of those Chinese ones that you get from eBay. Eleven point six three volts in climbing. Now, it's got a. It's a K, a B is in Bravo, P is in Peter, C is in Charlie. Five zero one zero rectifier. That's another Chinese gadget. Uh, I wish I could. And and by the way. Ice cold. Um, I'm finding that the relay, the rectifier, even the switches in these relays, I've been using this relay for months doing these projects. All the other projects you see, this is the same relay. Um, it's never gone bad. People say, oh, that'll oscillate for 20 minutes and it'll die. That's not true. This has been oscillating for uh, since the beginning of the summer, and we're already in uh, almost mid November. So, anyway. The battery, this battery was, was used, it's been drawn all the way down to like 2 volts. It didn't work at all, didn't do anything with it, and uh, I brought it back up to charge. This cap bank, uh, I, haven't, I don't think I've posted this in any videos yet, but uh, I did notice that with this circuit, just with the cap bank, without the transformer, you can put one of these oscillating circuits onto a battery, and it'll give you a charge effect, but then it'll kill the battery. You throw the capacitor bank in there, and it eliminates that. It gives you that 100% efficiency. This, what this draws from the capacitor bank actually holds that energy. So it has something to do with the capacitor bank uh, if you don't use a transformer. If you use a transformer, you can loop it back to the feed and, and charge the battery, as you're seeing. Now, this is jumping to 11.64 now. In a second, it'll go back up there. See? So takes a little while because we have a load on there. If I take the load off, which I'm going to do now, move that away so it doesn't turn back on. Now it'll charge much faster because there's no load on there. But um, see. This is a great little circuit for charging batteries. If you go, uh, your car is stuck on the side of the road and uh, you don't have any help somewhere, you know, this circuit will help you. So, all right, everybody, thanks for watching, and uh, please submit your comments and let me know what you think. I'd like to see what the skeptics have to say because this is the real deal. There's no, there's no trickery here at all. This is exactly what you see is what you get there's no batteries in anything other than this those are not batteries those are uh they're super capacitors i'll flip the thing over to show you they're just all banked together in series um you got to be careful when you build these guys you can get zapped pretty damn good this this electricity will hurt and um it may be very low amperage but from the shocks that i feel from it it, it, it hurts and i have some uh, long lasting effects in my in my hands from the nerves so 
don't uh, don't do this without having some sort of a rubber glove, something thick enough to protect you. Thanks for watching.